It's CCESD Today, your insider's guide to the Charleston County School District. This week, we take an inside look at R.B. Stahl High School. Hear from the principal, Kim Wilson. And learn about the Capturing Kids' Hearts and personalized learning programs. CCSD Today starts right now. We're here at Stahl High School, home of the Warriors. During this show, you'll get to learn all about the great things going on, talking with Principal Wilson, and learning about the exciting opportunities that his students are afforded. I'm Erica Taylor. You're watching CCSD Today. Stay tuned. I'm Jenna Dewan Tatum. I'm Julia Ormond. I'm Machen Amick. And I'm Rachel Boston. Every two minutes, a woman is diagnosed with breast cancer. Breast cancer will claim over 39,000 lives this year. But that won't be me. Or me. I won't let that be me. The end of breast cancer starts with me. And you. And you. And you. Go to mylifetime.com to get informed and involved. Brought to you by Cruise Chevy. You've got a friend in the car business. Welcome to another edition of CCSD Today. I'm your host, Erica Taylor, and joining me at Warrior Country is Principal Kim Wilson. We're at Stahl High School. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having us, Erica. Well, Mr. Wilson, let's talk about Stahl. You all are doing such great things. Um, share what you'd like. Oh, well, um, first of all, uh, it is just such an honor to uh, be a principal at uh, Stahl High School. Right. Uh, what I've found over here is several things. One is the community is so supportive of everything we do here. I've never had a business, never had a community member who we've asked for help that right. didn't want to help. And uh, then uh, the, the parents are just so supportive of uh, their children right. and, and of what we're trying to accomplish here. And then I think the most uh, rewarding thing is how appreciative the kids are of uh, the things that we have put in place to try to uh, better their future and, and broaden their horizons. Great. So this is your sixth year. Sixth year. And you know <laughs> and you're something? still smiling. Yeah. And you know, this is my 42nd year in education. And you, uh, So you started when you were three, four? <laughs> Something like that. Uh, I was a young graduate. Uh, but anyway, um, I have been, you know, prior to coming here, I was at another school for 25 years in Charleston County. And this just kind of has rejuvenated me being here and being able to try new things and, and just be so uh, welcomed by the community and the faculty and staff. It's just been a great, great setting. You have a very uh, diverse campus here. Um, from um, demographic to um, racial, socioeconomic. Um, tell me how that's helped you build such a great student culture. Right. Our um, diversity is made up of 25% uh, uh, Hispanic, okay. and that has grown from the first year I was here uh, from 12% to 25% this year. So it is growing and continues to grow, and we welcome that. And then we have about 12% uh, white and then the rest African American. So we have the most diverse uh, population in Charleston County as far as a high school goes. And we actually have half of the ESOL students, uh, high school age students, right. at this school. Wow. And so uh, that creates an environment where kids can share their culture and share their experiences from all over the world. Uh, from a culture uh, point of view from the school, we, we've we implemented a program called Capturing Kids Hearts and uh, that has really helped us form a basis for um, implementing other programs, academic programs mm -hmm. and, and other programs that have been very successful. So um, it's they have just, the kids have really bought into what we've, we've really brought on board. So you're a personalized learning school, and so you've implemented a number of strategies to um, assist students with learning. Talk about that. I mean, I, I know that um, our team, our personalized learning team, um, uses you as a model. I know you have visitors coming in and out of your schools all the time to, to, to see what you do. So um, tell our viewers a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, two years ago, uh, we were asked to participate in the personalized learning initiative that CCSD 
uh, was trying to implement. And so um, we uh, thought, this is it. You know, this is the instructional strategy program that is really going to help our kids get where they need to be. And uh, I think the uh, bottom line is, uh, with personalized learning, students take ownership mm -hmm. for their own learning. Right. And that is a great thing. The teacher becomes the facilitator right. in the room. And what I've noticed when I go into classroom is that uh, there's a whole different conversation going on with students. Normally you go into a classroom and you talk to a student and you say, hey, how are things going in the classroom? And they're going, all right. right. And, what are you learning? Oh, nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, and so even with my own children, I, I had those conversations. <laughs> so, but what was really uh, great now is when we go in, the kids are able to articulate what they're learning. Mm -hmm. They talk about standards. They talk about where they are. They talk about their goals and what standard that they have to reach in order to master certain uh, subjects and certain standards. And so it's really, uh, it's, it's transformed the classroom. Right. And uh, it's also an uh, opportunity that we know that kids differentiate instruction. We know that kids learn differently. Right. You know, uh, some kids like to learn standing up. Some right. kids like to work in small groups. Some kids like to work alone. Mm -hmm. And so it gives an opportunity for students to do that. And then they create things like standard operating procedures. But the teacher doesn't create them. The students create them for right. the class. And that's the way that they want their classroom to operate. The kids create a um, social contract right. on how they want to act in that class. Great. And then the teacher holds them accountable to that standard. And so it's really kids taking ownership for what's going on in the classroom and it's really transformational. So I, I know you're excited about it because we hear all the time that you are hosting teachers and other visitors to see what you're doing. So great job. Yeah, you know, uh, when I first came here, uh, I remember the first faculty meeting mm -hmm. that I came to and I, I was talking to the faculty and I said, we will know when we have arrived, when we're the ones going to conferences and we're the ones presenting. Mm -hmm. And they're, at, they're coming to our school to see what's going on. And that's what's happening. I mean, we've had visitors from all over the United States, Wisconsin, uh, Tennessee, all over. And uh, our kids, right. you know, I was expecting the teachers to present, and they are. They're presenting at high schools at work and ISTE conference and all kinds of conferences. And I'm going out to the uh, National Title I conference next month to present. Yeah. But what's really cool is now our students are presenting. They just came back from a, a conference in Florida uh, sponsored by the Marzano Group, and um, they got standing ovations, That's rave awesome. reviews. Uh, I got the second day they were there, I got an email from uh, a, an attendee right. who happens to work for another school district around this area saying, Wow, I love your kids, and can I come over and see what's happening at Stall? And I'm like, Yeah, come on over. So it's, it's just been great. You, you must be really proud of, of what you're doing and what your students are doing. I think that's a really good way to end is to talk about some of the people who have gone through this. Mm -hmm. uh, Tim Scott, he has such a wonderful story. Right. But you know, I, I think back to the first time I met uh, Senator Scott. He came to our school mm -hmm. and he spoke to a group of kids, and then I shook his hand and thanked him for coming, and then I went back to my office and continued on what I do every day. And uh, so uh, later on that day, it was like 2 o'clock, I was getting ready to go out and uh, go to a classroom, and I see Senator Scott. Now, he's been here since 8 o'clock that morning. I know he has a lot to do on his right. plate, but after he spoke, he felt uh, in he just felt like he needed to stay, and, and he talked with kids. He went into classrooms. And uh, I didn't even know he was here. I felt kind of bad, but uh, he didn't. He loved it. He loved every minute. But to be able to have someone like that come in and share their story, these kids, it provides a hope. It provides dreams, you know, that they can, they can make that happen, too. And so that has just been a, a great support system. And we have all kinds of people who do that. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We're excited about today's show. Stay tuned. We'll be back with more about Stahl High School when we return. Kiowa Cares represents a really unique way and an organized way for folks who live here on Kiowa to connect, partner, and help 
those who live in our neighborhood, which includes Johns and Wabula Island. And the idea was that many, many people who live on Kiowa very generously work as individuals in the community. But we felt as a community association, we needed to do more in a unified way to be good neighbors. And out of that came the idea of Kiowa Cares. They brought volunteers, but most of all, they brought love. They showed love and they said, we want to be a good neighbor, and they have been a good neighbor to me and to this community. Kiowa Cares quickly jumped on board and was really excited about the idea of supporting the local farmers and supporting the Johns Island community as well. We're excited about the partnership and we are in constant communication, updating them on things that, um, that we are working on, areas where I continue to see improvement I share with them. and So it's like we are in tune. Um, working together, one common goal, and it's all beginning to come together. What it means to me to be a part of Kiwi Cares is I'm able to do things I wouldn't normally have done um, on my own. Uh, I get the sense of community when I work with them. We're trying to put good people in touch with organizations that could use their help. The law firm of Young Clement Rivers has been serving the Charleston Low Country since 1968. All of the lawyers of Young Clement Rivers are proud to be partners with the Charleston County School District. We are convinced that the hard work of the school district employees and staff prepares our young people to face the challenges of the future. We look forward to continuing our partnership and in helping the school district to meet its standard of excellence. Welcome back to more CCSD Today. I'm your host, Erica Taylor, and we are still at Stahl High School. Joining me now is Ms. Barbara Grigsby, who's a teacher that supports the Capturing Kids Hearts program. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Tell me a little bit about Capturing Kids Hearts. What, what is it? Capturing Kids Hearts is a program that we've initiated here at Stahl High School okay. in order to create relationships and build relationships between the staff and the students. Okay. Tell me a little bit about the activities um, with the Capturing Kids Hearts program. What, what does that look like? How do the teachers and students engage each other? Students and teachers build relationships with each other. Uh, we start by greeting our students at the door Great. each morning with a handshake. Uh, within the classroom, there is a person that we've, initi we've initiated as a greeter. Mm -hmm. So that person greets individuals who visit the classroom. We have a social contract in our classrooms where teachers and students uh, come to an agreement as to how they want to be treated by okay. the teacher, mm -hmm. how students want to be treated by the, each other, mm -hmm. and it just creates a great atmosphere within the classroom. How long has Stahl been a part of this program? We've been a part of this program since 2011. Okay, and so have you seen a difference in students and um, teachers' interaction with each other? I've not only seen difference in students and teachers' interaction with each other, our students interact with guests that enter our building. 
uh, in the past, we had students that weren't very friendly or let's say inviting to right. visitors within the school. So now when visitors come, our students greet our visitors. They initiate conversation with our visitors with a handshake, uh, eye contact. Right. So it's been very, very beneficial for students as well as the staff here. So um, the program uh, teaches the, the, those soft skills that students need when they leave high school and go look for jobs or go on to post-secondary education opportunities. Exactly. That's awesome. And so the teachers that um, help implement the program, um, tell me a little bit about them. And um, I think they, they're called Process Champions. There are a group of us that are called Process Champions, and okay. we've been trained. So what we do, we work with other staff members uh, in the building. Okay. Uh, everyone in the building is trained, mm -hmm. from the front desk, the custodial workers, mm -hmm. the cafeteria workers, everyone that has contact with the students. Right. So are there any um, you, success stories, um, any unique stories that you'd like to share, as if, whether or not we're talking about a student or a teacher, um, where this program has really had a positive impact on a child or student? I just really think the program has built confidence within all of our students. It's not a, something that magically fix all for everything, but as long as you have staff buy-in, uh, the program will be successful. Right. Uh, I think the biggest success that I've seen is the confidence level that is built in our students. Great. And I think that's important, you know, if students who are confident do well in the classroom and do well outside of the classroom as well. Exactly. I also think that Capturing Kids Hearts have allowed our teachers to actually teach in the classroom because it's uh, changed the atmosphere. It's changed the whole atmosphere of the classroom. And especially for students to um, talking about the social contract to hold themselves accountable and to hold their peers accountable and then the teacher can hold them accountable. So everyone has a, a part in um, making the classroom experience successful. So I think that's really important. I think so too. And one thing that we're talking with Mr. Wilson, um, you know, you, you are a model school that really implements this program with fidelity and so you should be committed for that. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Is there anything that you'd like to share that I haven't asked you? Um, I think it's important to know that uh, this program works, mm -hmm. and it works if you uh, consistent. Mm -hmm. uh, it works if uh, you implement it with fidelity, mm -hmm. and it works uh, if there's staff buy-in. And I would encourage other schools to invest in it. Great. Well. I know by watching a little bit of this show, hopefully our other schools will invest in it. I hope so. Thank you for joining me, Mrs. Grigsby. Thank you for having me. No problem. We're still at Stahl. Stay tuned. We'll be back with more. Kids learn it at their own pace, to remediate on their own, see their own results, celebrate their successes right there. I think it's easier for me to do things like online, like it captures my attention better than like doing it in books. It's just made it easy, it, it is, it, you know, it's made it easy um, and the kids like it. There are a lot of pictures, sometimes it can be really funny and some stories are make-believe. I would never have believed um, that we would be a school that would be fully, you know, implementing technology in every classroom. So we did it, and it's due to McGraw Hill.
Some problems are tough. Reaching your customers shouldn't be. Blue Wave and Comcast have the creative edge to make you stand out from the crowd and connect with your customers. Whether you need a commercial for television, video for your website, or a custom-made website, we are the easy solution for every advertising problem. I'm Jenna Dewan Tatum. I'm Julia Ormond. I'm Machen Amick. And I'm Rachel Boston. Every two minutes, a woman is diagnosed with breast cancer. Breast cancer will claim over 39,000 lives this year. But that won't be me. Or me. I won't let that be me. The end of breast cancer starts with me. And you. And you. And you. Go to MyLifetime.com to get informed and involved. Brought to you by Cruise Subaru of Charleston. You've got a friend in the car business. We're back with more CCSD today. I'm your host, Erica Taylor. And now joining me for today's show is Miss Brittany Lester, who's a math teacher here at Stahl High School, but she also does uh, something special. And that me and that special thing that she does is to integrate personalized learning into her classroom. Thank you for joining the show. No problem. So tell me about personalized learning and tell the viewers because I know we talk about it and they think it's an iPad, but it's more to that. What is it? Definitely. So personalized learning um, kind of goes along. We also have Capturing Kids Hearts mm -hmm. here at Stahl. Right. Um, both parts in my mind put together what we want the kids to become when they're adults. So it's creating a self-managing group based on behavior mm -hmm. and then personalized learning piece comes in to create um, self-managing group academically. So it's that behavior piece, that academic piece, and then they go together. And so give me some um, some examples. If, if someone really wanted to know what that looked like, can you break it down just a little bit? Absolutely. So in a traditional classroom, mm -hmm. um, basically it's the teacher saying this is when you're going to learn the material. You can't learn it any other time. It's going to be this time and this time only. Right. But in a personalized learning classroom, it's kind of the idea where okay, so we may be teaching equations today, right. but if you're not ready for equations and you might get it two months later, I'm still kind of dinging you for not knowing it when I said it was time to know it. Right. So that doesn't make any sense right. um, for different kids because we all have different backgrounds coming from different nine years of schooling. Right. So it's basically just the idea of kids knowing things when it's their time to know them, uh, moving at their own pace to fill in their own gaps right. and, and to kind of move along that way. It's all for benefiting the kids. Right. So whatever we can do to get them to learn at their time and for them to feel confident that they've mastered all of the material, that's, that's the game plan. How, how's the assessment? done and what does that look like? And that can look different in several different teachers classrooms. Right. Um, in my classroom formative assessments they can take as many times as they would like so my whole goal we just keep at the front of our mind um, me and Miss Leach my teammate um, that our goal is for them to learn the material and to show us that they have learned it not an A on the assessment. So those if they take a quiz and they fail it, what's the point of putting an F in the grade book? No, right. I want them to go back, learn what I wanted them to learn in the first place, because right. that's the whole point, right. and then show me that they learned it again. So it's those summative assessments at the end, those unit assessments that they cannot go back and redo, but at that point, when right. they're taking those summative assessments, they are confident that they learned everything previous because they've scored exceeds mastery or mastery on all of those formative assessments there. How does that translate with, with parents? I mean, are parents, especially the students that you have in your class, are, are they um, feel comfortable and do they understand how their students are learning and um, knowing that they are learning at the rate that they should be learning at? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So my parents have been super supportive just right. because instead of just being a kid in the classroom, mm -hmm. they're the kid in the classroom right. because it's their education. Right. So uh, parents love them taking on their own responsibility, taking on um, time management skills, which Michaela brought up a lot at the conference last week. Um, just all of these things kind of go together to create this lifelong learning adult, right. which is what all parents strive for in the beginning. So, so you've already talked about the um, conference in mm -hmm. Florida. So tell me a little bit about that. So the conference is a little bit of a different experience for me. Um, it was INA Cole and it's a Marzano conference and RISC, um, the Reinventing Schools Coalition, they kind of put it on together. Uh, it was a blended learning conference, online and blended learning. So there were some students there who did total online classes, some students there who did online classes three days a week, um, and then our students there that do the personalized learning, kind of the blended situation. So it was all a lot of different perspectives for a lot of different reasons. It's very cool, very cool. And Stahl was chosen to attend? Yes, okay. yes, five of our students were chosen to attend. 
for Ed, the whole state of South Carolina. And now I have an opportunity to speak with another personalized learning teacher, Ms. Chloe Leach. She's a math teacher here and she supports what our students do as it relates to personalized learning. Thank you for joining us. Of course, thank you for having me. So I know you supported the students that went to Florida. Mm -hmm. I know they did a fantastic job. Yeah, they did. So tell me about it. Sure. So we were able to take five of our students here. We actually did a little bit of a tryout. Mm -hmm. We, Ms. Lester and myself, we nominated 10 students we thought would um, articulate the best what personalized learning is. Right. And they tried out in front of some of our district um, personalized learning staff mm -hmm. and they narrowed it down to the best five students and that was based on stage presence and who can articulate best and who gets the whole entire idea of personalized learning. Um, so those five students, we got to travel. We just got back yesterday. We were there Sunday to Wednesday in Orlando, Florida. So iNACOL is a combination of what Ms. Lester was saying is blended mm -hmm. learning and online learning. Okay. So personalized learning sort of falls under the blended learning. Right. Um, it's just a different style. It's mm -hmm. innovative, it's new, it's fresh, and it meets the students exactly where they are. So the first day, Monday, um, all five of the students got to speak on a panel. And our children just blew the roof off. They spoke so well, very eloquently, and they just, um, it, this wasn't scripted. They right. just spoke from the heart and just drove home exactly what personalized learning is. And um, at the end, they had people from the audience ask questions, and the, I mean, they just did such a wonderful job. They really made people understand why it works. That's awesome. It really was. And then Tuesday to follow it up, we had um, two of the students from the five who were on, who were the keynote speakers wow. for 3,000 people. That's awesome. Unbelievable. And they just weren't afraid to talk at all. They right. took the mic, they took charge, and just answered as honestly as they could, and they right. got a standing ovation from 3,000 people. That is awesome. I, and like, like I shared with Ms. Lester, we, we got word at how mm -hmm. well they did, but um, I had no idea that, um, you know, they presented in front of 3,000 people. Yeah, I mean, big. and it's a big deal for students to present anyway at anyway. a conference. Mm -hmm. So for um, our students to be able to do that, that's awesome. And it's a testament to the work that you as teachers do to prepare them um, for these opportunities. So kudos to you well, too. Well, thank you so much. We are really proud of them. They, they did a phenomenal job. Um, is there anything that um, else that, I, that you'd like to share as it relates to personalized learning? Sure. Um, I, Ms. Lester did a wonderful job at talking about some of the misconceptions of personalized learning. Right. I think the biggest thing for me is being transparent 100% with everything that you do. Mm -hmm. um, when we returned from our trip yesterday and we saw some of our, you know, sub notes, how the kids were when we weren't here, we always try and address everything head on and we have conversations and we're so open and honest with the kids right. because it's important to us mm -hmm. and to the students that they know that we're in this together right. and we're going to talk about everything and we're going to see what does it look like, what does it not look like, and let's figure it out how it works for our classroom. So transparency is 100% the key to making personalized learning success. Successful. Awesome. Thank you for taking time to talk of with me. Of course. Thank you for having me. No problem. So we've talked about the conference. Now you have an opportunity to hear from the students who actually presented to 3,000 participants. I'm excited to hear. Stay tuned. It was kind of nerve-wracking because like, oh, I'm speaking in front of a lot of people in another state, but um, it was really cool. We all um, worked together to help each other. We practiced how we would answer the questions. I actually spoke from my heart and uh, like, I felt like I was acting. Well, the conference I went in with like a positive attitude, a growth mindset, you can say, and I just thought the best because I was a little nervous and um, I just started answering the questions to the best of my ability. Later, we went to um, the Magic Kingdom, downtown Disney, everything. And it was like uh, one of those one in a lifetime things you get to do. It was really nice that they gave us tickets to go to Magic Kingdom. That was really nice. It was a really fun trip. It was a great experience. If I got the opportunity to do it again, I would definitely do it again. I'm Jenna Dewan Tatum. I'm Julia Ormond. I'm Machen Amick. And I'm Rachel Boston. Every two minutes, a woman is diagnosed with breast cancer. Breast cancer will claim over 39,000 lives this year. But that won't be me. Or me. I won't let that be me. The end of breast cancer starts with me. And you. And you. And you. Go to mylifetime.com to get informed and involved. Locally sponsored by Ford. Ford is in the race for the cure. 
The law firm of Young Clement Rivers has been serving the Charleston Low Country since 1968. All of the lawyers of Young Clement Rivers are proud to be partners with the Charleston County School District. We are convinced that the hard work of the school district employees and staff prepares our young people to face the challenges of the future. We look forward to continuing our partnership and in helping the school district to meet its standard of excellence. Here's a question for you. What does this look like? It may look like a blank screen, but it's really an opportunity for you to reach your customers. With a great television commercial, video for your website, or website design, Comcast and Blue Wave Productions can create the right message to get you noticed. Call today and take the opportunity to make your business stand out from the crowd. So there you have it, another exciting show. We enjoy being able to provide you the opportunity to learn all about the great things that our schools have to offer, and I hope you've been excited about learning about STAHL. It's been a pleasure being your host. I'm Erica Taylor, and please stay tuned for next week's CCSD Today.